Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening. Thank you very much for wherever you're joining us around the world for this uh, ISVOG Facebook live event um, that's being presented to you by the members of the Next Generation uh, Committee. We're very excited what we have to talk to you about in the next 30 minutes, and we're delighted that you are here with us. My name is Surgeon Sasso. I'm a consultant gynecologist and gynecological cancer surgeon at Imperial College here in London. And I am delighted to be joined by my four wonderful colleagues from all around the world. Uh, in particular, I have Jezid Miranda from Colombia, I have Paz Zahomada from Chile, I have Daniel Rolnik from Australia, and Leo Drucker from Israel. The purpose of today is to tell you a little bit, little bit about the Next Generation Committee, which is a newly formed committee uh, formed here as part of ISWOG for the purpose of helping and guiding trainees and also to focus a little bit about uh, on the World Congress that's coming up in October from the 15th to 17th of October. What is there to look forward to? What are the highlights? And what you can gain as uh, practicing clinicians and in particular as promising trainees and uh, researchers. A um, little brief about the Next Generation uh, Committee. This was formed initially at the end of 2019 um, and we started doing some work in 2020 but it has officially done most of their most of its work here in 2021 um, the vision is to um, is for iswoc to support guide and mentor and inspire trainees and newly qualified clinicians worldwide uh, the vision is for us to help trainees out there to better interact with iswoc to find out uh, modalities and pathways for research, for training, um, and really to act as a mediator or as a kind of a vessel between um, some of those top professors that you might have uh, listened to and heard and um, yourselves. So it's for us to connect you with them, to help you improve your work, to find you fellowships and so on. So please remember our names and get in touch with questions. So. Let's kick off first with uh, Jezid. How are you, Jezid? Uh, he's all the way in Cartagena in Colombia, the, the city of Gabriel Marquez. <laughs> wonderful to, to have him here. So just to kick off, uh, Jezid, tell us a little bit about uh, what you do, how you ended up where you are, why you love what you love. Thank you very much. Uh, just to say a, a friendly um, regard from Colombia to everybody. So yes, yes, I, I am in Cartagena, Jordan. Uh, this is in the north coast of Colombia, and I'm telling you this because I have um, do all my experience here. You know, I did the medicine here in the University of Cartagena, also BGYN here, and you know, we had all this background that is very peculiar or common in, in Latin America. And it's a, Colombia is a developing country, so we had uh, a lot of. Uh, necessities here. We still have maternal mortality, perinatal mortality. So I fell in love with uh, obstetric because uh, we have a lot of things to improve. You know, it's very sad when you see a woman who dies during childbirth. And this is something that is going on still in 2021. So that is one of, the, of my first um, commitments in terms of my country or my city. But then when I finished OBGYN, I, I have been always involved in research. So I was first involved in research, maternal morbidity and mortality, and then come up a new opportunity to join to the group of Professor Romero, Roberto Romero in Detroit. So he's running the perinatal research branch in Detroit with the NIH. And then I joined them in 2012. And then, so that was a, you know, that was like a great opportunity to join a professor who have a big record of, of research who I learned a lot there and then I get you know in love with with fetal uh, disease uh, fetal therapy and then I move to the group of Barcelona with Professor Gratacos and then I complete my PhD and it's a happy story because in 2018 now I come back to Cartagena so now I am working here I joined my my university in Cartagena University and I'm working with you know with the pros and cons to work in a developing country that I am working with people who maybe don't have all the resources, but we are very happy because we are providing fetal therapy, maternal care, 
And this is what, what I am doing right now here. So I'm very happy. I'm with my family, with my colleagues, and my, my old professor, they see me how I left and then how I returned. So I'm very happy to be here. Perfect. You are all invited. Thank you. Uh, we would love to come. <laughs> so so you, you are like um, Don Quixote in the background. Uh, yeah. A, a knight, a knight uh, trying to help women uh, who may be in trouble with pregnancies, correct? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So tell me, Jesse, do you, World Congress is coming up. I know yeah. you have a role. What are you looking forward to it? Any exciting new topics? Uh, what should delegates attend? For me, it's like, a, you know, we are all very young. We, we are starting our careers. So for me, it's like a very exciting meeting this year because now I am like part of the meeting. I used to be three or four years ago, just there watching all these stars, these big professors. And now we're just at least being involved with everything. So I think, uh, that issue actually, to be honest, was the, the Congress who, I mean, to solve the problem of the pandemic. 2020 was a great, a great meeting, a virtual meeting, but was great meeting. So I, I am looking forward because I think they are solving this, you know, this limitation that we have with virtual reality. I, I do love how ISO combine all our, our speciality. We are not, talk, I am just talking about obstetrics, but you know that ISO have a big background in gynecology. And also, I am looking forward for um, many of the problems that we, we always still want to solve. You know, there is a lot of content in preeclampsia, a lot of content of fetal growth restriction. And I also like, maybe you have one specific, very specific content that you like to, to love. I love fetal therapy. I work in fetal therapy. And there is a lot of content there. So I'm looking forward for, for many plenary sessions that are involved in there. I'm looking forward for the future. If you look in the program, there is a lot of intelligent, uh, artificial intelligence in ultrasound. I think that would be great in a, in a few years. So very exciting actually, I'm looking forward for, for, for interact also. In the last meeting, you can interact during the poster season. And I think we can do that again, especially during, during this virtual meeting. Excellent, thank you so much for summarizing that. You mentioned there are two things that you've highlighted. One is artificial intelligence, so I'd like to bring yeah. in uh, Lior Druka, who is uh, joining us from uh, Israel. Lior, welcome. Hi, thank you, Dan. Lior is a big name in machine learning and artificial intelligence, and uh, uh, he's uh, actually chairing a workshop in September together yeah. with Professor Derek Timmerman on this topic. He has given many uh, talks so far with regards to his work. He's published on this. Lior, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you hope that machine learning will evolve as part of ISWOG over the next decade. Okay, so that's, that's a lot to cover in a few minutes, but um, <laughs> <Sorry>. so <laughs> I, I, that's, that's absolutely fine. So I will tell you a little bit about myself. So I am an academic scientist and a clinician, so, and I work at Robin Medical Center in, in near Tel Aviv uh, in Israel. And I'm also at the same time working as a research fellow at the University of Oxford in the United Kingdom. So I really divide my time between hands-on fetal medicine ultrasound uh, and uh, research in machine learning. I went uh, to study, in, well, I, I went to medical school in, in Israel. And um, while I was in med school in Israel, I, was work, I started working in computers because that was a very good uh, student job. And um, well, I think that I, I loved and, and, and had uh, both worlds at, at the same time while uh, studying medicine. And when I finished medicine, uh, well, while I was in med school, I, I have to say that I was really fascinated by obstetric ultrasound when, when I saw one of the consultants, one of the keynote speakers, Sim Hayagel, who is also um, one of the keynote uh, lecturers uh, this year. And so I saw him working and I really admired his work. So I thought, yeah, this, this could be something that I would be very interested in. And then uh, I, uh, when, so when I finished med school, I went to uh, become a resident in obstetrics and gynecology. And when I finished my residency, I looked for a fellowship opportunity and there was an, a fantastic fellowship opportunity um, with Iris Papa Giorgio in the, in, in the University of uh, Oxford in the United Kingdom, because they were looking for a clinician um, to help a team of 
engineers who are trying to understand more about aesthetic ultrasound. So I thought, oh, this is this really combines my both worlds of knowledge because I understand computers and um, I think uh, that I know some medicine as well. And uh, I have been so I have been working for almost now five years at the University of Oxford with a team of uh, more than twenty engineers trying to really understand how ultrasound is being done and and we um, then want to teach a computer how obstetric ultrasound is being done because when or I would say the non-expert when a non-expert looks at obstetric ultrasound or looks at any ultrasound it looks like 50 shades of gray and then when you tell something small cues when you give small cues to the computer like where the important thing in the in, in, in the image is then a lot can be achieved and, and we are still at the research I would say that we are still at the research uh, part of uh, of artificial intelligence in obstetrics and gynecology so there is a lot of things that we can uh, used today in artificial intelligence already, but uh, they are emerging and coming. And I think that in 20 years time or maybe 10 years time, there will be a lot. And artificial intelligence will be a topic by itself because it will work like there is no dedicated session to internet or to computers because it's just part of our life. Okay. Um, for me, just before we move on very quickly, for me, one of the one of the things that I find is that there's an emphasis on overly broad notions of generalizability as it pertains to applications of machine learning in healthcare, which can then sometimes overlook situations where machine learning might provide clinical uh, utility. Do you think there is this um, clash between uh, a narrow focus on generalizability and potentially wider considerations for building machine learning systems that are useful at the bedside, if you see what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I, that is a very, very good question. And I think that all artificial intelligence products or applications that would emerge in the next, in the coming years would never replace the doctor and physician and, and the, the individual thought that, that's needed, but would be of an assistive device by either providing quality assurance or allowing uh, a quicker um, scan or interpretation but wouldn't really replace any of us so i'm not worried for anyone who is interested in ops and obstetrics and gynecology <laughs> as i will present also the next generation so my aim is not to tell everyone no don't don't uh, don't don't practice ultrasound because uh, you're being uh, going to be replaced by a computer so i think that this is going to be an integrative tool to our work and there is definitely a lot of problems still with generality and and there will be there will be in the coming years so it, it hasn't been uh, solved in in other fields so and, and i think that in, in our ways it's not going to be solved very easily for many reasons like the, the acquisition process is very difficult so there is a there's a lot there's a lot um, to happen, and uh, I'm, I'm sure that it will impact our clinical daily life, but it will take it will take time. Perfect. Uh, with, with regards to specifically to the um, to the World Congress, um, there are a number of things that the ISWOC does to me extremely well, and why from all the congresses that I've been to, I, I I'm not just being biased, but I love going to ISWOC. Um, and one of them is if every year there is a new there's something novel introduced, a new workshop or a new hub or um, a new oral communication session. So for gynecology this year, we have finally a workshop, obstetrics have done this, but we have, we have a workshop looking at how artificial intelligence changes, what to do with ultrasound in uh, gynecology. We're very excited by this. It, this will be on the Sunday, 17th of October. It will be chaired by the president, Professor Tom Bourne, and Professor Dirk Timmerman from uh, Leuven, uh, Belgium. Four fantastic uh, invited uh, speakers uh, looking at different uh, topics, radiomics, deep neural networks, and analysis of how of Google searches, how we can use Google's Google searches to power our diagnostic capabilities. So please join that session 17th of, uh, of uh, October. Uh, move, <coughs> moving on, um, to some of our other uh, distinguished uh, guests here today. We have um, Pazo, our mother. So this is going back to 
what we were saying earlier with Jezid, ISWOG is international, and we're trying with the Next Generation Committee, build the presence and increase the presence of trainees from Latin America, not just Spanish speaking, we also have Daniel here, but also from Brazil, which is obviously a, mainly a Portuguese speaking uh, country. So uh, if you are a Latin American trainee that's listening here today, please come to his work, please join, please contact the um, members of the committee who are from uh, Latin America and see how we can help you to become ISWOG members to increase your uh, profile. Paz, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do in Chile. Um, nice to see you all. Uh, well, um, I work in, in Santiago of Chile. I studied medicine in the University of Santiago de Chile. And, and there is when I, I got in love with Objin. Um, because it, it's a um, area of medicine full of life. And here in Chile, it resembles uh, the Asian concept of the what is to be a medical doctor. Because uh, it's possible to go along many years with the patient, with women, uh, in their health care in each, each crucial stage of their lives. And then uh, I studied the uh, OBGYN in the University of Chile, uh, where I had the, the great opportunity to go to Barcelona. There uh, I met Jesid, and uh, then there I, I become, I, it, burns, it burns like a, a new motivation, the, the research area. Um, and then I, I came back to, to Barcelona to start a, a doctorate program with, with Jesid. And uh, I worked in, on the environment and in, in pregnancy complication. And also in brain uh, disease, um, brain fetal, fetal brain development. Um, first of all, I, I would like to involve more in, in clinical research, which is not always easy, especially in Latin America countries uh, where there are not a lot of opportunities uh, to do research for clinicians. Um, my research in Europe has motivated to, to do uh, further research in my home country, in Chile, and inspiring me to make a change in the way to do medicine and to inspire the other young clinicians as well. And now I'm working in the University of Chile in a public uh, hospital. And uh, I would like to, to keep it the research area. And what out of all the topics that you mentioned, if you had to focus on one that you love, that, has a, that you would like to highlight uh, at this year's World yeah. Congress, in terms of who's speaking, which hub, which masterclass, what's, what's, what should somebody who's coming to his work for the first time, especially from where you're from, where should well, they go, what should they listen to? Well, I would like to listen to Raigam because uh, he has a, a Raigam, hub. Say his, say his full name, full name and surname. Yeah, uh, Raigam Martinez Portilla from Mexico. Good. Yeah, he's uh, another <laughs> engine. Uh, uh, he's another engine committee part and he will talk about the, how becoming a, a clinical researcher. Yeah, it's very interesting, uh, mainly for the, the new generation of uh, clinicians. Okay, uh, just, to, just to highlight that to anybody who's listening, we have ne two next generation hubs at this year's uh, World Congress. We have an, uh, an obstetric hub, which I will bring Daniel into in a second, and we have a gynecological NGEN, N-G-E-N, NGEN hub um, focusing, as Paz has said, how do I become a clinical researcher? It will be chaired by two NGEN committee members, Raigam from Mexico City and Tej Tejal Amin from London, uh, UK. We have four top uh, professors that will be um, uh, will form a part of this hub. We have Leona Poon from Hong Kong, Professor Christopher Lees from United Kingdom, Professor Quemby from the United Kingdom and Professor Walter Freuman from Belgium. Two obstetrics, two gynae. Um, and the purpose of this for any, is for trainees to listen, to find out A, how they can develop their careers, but also to pick up some names as to who they can contact if they're interested in further uh, academia 
uh, relevant to uh, to ultrasound. So please come and join Friday, 15th of uh, October. Speaking of the other obstetric hub, this one will be chaired by Daniel uh, Rolnik, um, who is currently Monash University in Melbourne in Australia. He's originally from Brazil. I'm sure many of you have heard his talks before uh, within ISWOG. Um, uh, very promising uh, researcher. I look forward to what he has to say, Daniel. Please tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and obviously about the NGEN hub that you will be running at this year's World Congress. Thank you, Sergen. So yeah, I'm, I'm Daniel. I'm originally from Brazil. So I uh, grew up in Sao Paulo. Um, I did my medical school there. And, and an interesting fact is that I always wanted to be a neurosurgeon until uh, my fourth year of medical school. Uh, and then I realized that neurosurgery is probably too sad for me and, and had a, an elective rotation in obstetrics where I just became in love with, with it and said, that's what I want to do. It's, it's happiness most of the time. Um, it is life. And, and that's what I want to do. And then I did my training in University of Sao Paulo. Um, always, I was always very interested in ultrasound and ended up getting a fellowship in London and went to the Fetal Medicine Foundation to train with Professor Kipros Nicolaides, where I got heavily involved with research. Um, and, and since then, I think I became in love with research and I still do it. Um, and after I finished my fellowship there, I was offered a job here in Melbourne, in Australia, and I decided to take it. Um, and my job at the moment, what I do is essentially half, so it's 50% of my time I do clinical work, basically high-risk pregnancy care, a lot of ultrasound, fetal medicine, fetal surgery, and the other half of my time I do research. Um, and a few years ago, I also decided to go back to school and, and do some training in public health. So I'm really interested in population health, screening, um, and, and things like that. Yeah, and I think the NGEN is a fantastic initiative from ISWOG. It's something that I wish I had when I was a trainee because um, I think it's, it's a great opportunity for trainees and people who are entering the specialty of obstetrics and gynecology now. The, you know, people from NGN are accessible. They are, most of us are young. So people can just approach us and talk to us and, and see uh, what journey we had so far and, and potentially get involved in his work as well. So I think that's a, a very good idea. Um, yeah, and I'm very much looking forward to the Congress as well. Uh, you mentioned already the hub that Lior and I will be uh, chairing. So we'll, we'll chair a hub on fetal growth and it's gonna be a fantastic session with some very good speakers, some authorities in the field, really, Leona Poon, Christoph Lees. I'm very much looking forward to the Congress. Fantastic. Um, I guess my question um, to all of you here uh, with, with the World Congress uh, coming up is you're all from different regions. Um, wh what are you hoping that the ISWOG brings to each one of your respective regions? Anyone can jump in. Mm. There is a... If you take a look in the program, I like that issue. I mean, they are really, really, really thinking about going global, right? And when I used to go to those meetings, when, I, when I, you know, when you come out from a background from a long income and there is a only lectures about a technology that you don't have in your setting, you, you feel that like you are losing your money because you say, I, I never going to practice this. But that is something that I think uh, is solved in the program because there are specific lectures, you know, like how to do this in low income. I mean, if you take a look in the in the 17 and in the, in the 16, there are topics in gynecology and obstetrics that are focusing how to apply. And this is what we are doing right now. You know, we are talking about implementation. And Daniel have a beautiful paper in the New England Journal of Medicine about how I can bring that uh, to Colombia. And uh, I think that is an information that always uh, I get from, from the ISUC meetings. And I am sure people that is listening from developing countries are going to, to get information that are not going to be only for them, but are going to be applicable 
to their countries and their patients, regardless of if they are working in a rich hospital or, not, or, a, or a poor hospital. So I, I, I just want to highlight that because I really think that when people go to the meeting, when they come back to their countries, they really have something to offer to their patients. Perfect. I, lo I, lo I love that summary. That exactly is what is focused for me. The, the education, the most important component, which is what you're talking about, education, guidelines, training. So you go back and you help your population. Number two, as we discussed earlier, the ability um, to learn things outside ultrasound. So that thinking outside the box concept. Uh, and finally, if, uh, again, people can chip in at any point, but I love the live demonstrations that you also get with Israel. Well. Exactly. In gynecology, seeing experts perform those Doing scans. It. Um, in gynecology this year, we have a combination. We've been trying this for the last two years, seeing uh, Matthew Leonardi, George Condus, Joseph Yazbek, myself. We have this, we strongly believe that a, an excellent gynecological surgeon also needs to be an excellent uh, sonologist or an excellent at ultrasound. They should be combined, not not two different pathways. And we have some fantastic live demonstrations of both of those being done at the same time at this year's uh, Congress. I what remember some happened? years ago, Surgeon, uh, going to the ISWOG and seeing the live demonstrations and saying, I, I wish I become, uh, you know, someone who can scan like this in the future. And that's what I really hope on behalf of South America, for example, that people become enthusiastic about improving quality of scanning, uh, improving yeah. care to women in low-income so, uh, countries and, and, and also becoming enthusiastic about research because research comes from the United States, from, the, from Europe all the time, but we need to increase the presence of research in, in many other countries as well. 100, 100, uh, yeah. 100. Sorry, I, I think that it, it's a good opportunity to see what uh, other countries are doing because uh, with the COVID-19 situation, we, 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 we have exposed and, and it's more evident every day and it's more evident than ever that every country, every continent have uh, different realities. And uh, I also am a little bit curious about the development of uh, self-care activities that the ISWOG team has promoted last year. We already know that the lifestyle medicine is relevant in, in a transversal way. And indeed, if we want to spread health, we must to start with ourselves. I like that. That's right. I like that also. Yeah. <laughs> and if I can say something about the Dalai Lab demonstrations, I think that it's also amazing to see how experts in our field sit and look at other experts scanning and, and are learning from very small tips and tricks that they mention while scanning. And I've heard, often heard colleagues, experts who have been scanning for decades saying, yeah, wow, this is amazing. I'm going to, this is going to change my practice. And I, one of my mentors once told me that, well, a doctor is a student till he dies. Uh, and when he could, once he considers himself not a student anymore, the doctor inside him dies. Yeah. And Sirjan, tell us a little bit about you then, because the <laughs> four of us do more obstetrics. <laughs> <laughs> and you are the one who does I'm the, I'm more gynecology. The, I'm, They're representing, I'm representing gynecology. I'm representing gynecology, right? right? <laughs> I'm, I'm the, gyne <laughs> the, 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 the sole trader. Um, so very briefly, I, um, I'm a consultant gynecologist, but with a subspecialty interest in gynecological surgery and gynecological cancer surgery, also known as gynecological oncology. Um, at the same time, I have been fortunate enough to have met some um, fantastic people that have mentored me. With regards to ultrasound, in particular, professors Tom Bourne and uh, Dirk uh, Timmerman, as well as Joseph Yazbek, who works with me at, uh, at Imperial. Um, my big interest is uh, how to combine ultrasound and surgery for the management of gynecological pathology, including cancer, in those women that are still within their reproductive potential. So they can still have a family, they can still have a baby, because how you treat that pathology in those women is different to how you treat that pathology in women who are older menopausal, for example. So that's my big clinical and academic interest. And over the last few years, actually being inspired at ISWOG by listening to people like Leo, I've, I've got myself involved with um, uh, technology, in, in particular machine learning, and the use of internet and Google searches to, to try and see how we can combine non-medical fields to improve patient outcomes um, 
in our everyday uh, practice. So that's uh, that's my focus. I'm here at Imperial in uh, London for anybody that may that may want to get in touch. That's uh, that's my that's my summary. Uh, before we finish, any other uh, last minute uh, plenary speakers you may want to highlight or any other hubs or workshops that that's come to mind? I mean, from, from my end, uh, we have another new thing in gynecology, which is a uh, first time we're doing this. This is a workshop looking at uh, how imaging ultrasound can evaluate pediatric and adolescent gynecological patients. This will be chaired by Dr. Mayal Memar and uh, Professor Dirk Timmerman, uh, which is something new. So ultrasound in, the, in the, those below the age of 18. So we have some fantastic speakers, Nishat Barwani, Matthew Leonardi, looking at endometriosis, um, Stanley Andres talking about PCOS. I think it will be Fantastic. I, I don't know much about uh, pediatric and adolescent gynecology. And for the first time, we have this uh, in, uh, in uh, ISVOC. So I'd like to just highlight that. But if there's anything else anybody wants to mention, please do. Yeah, I think, uh, the thing about this conference is that there are so many hubs and so many interesting things happening at the same time. And it's always a challenge to choose yeah, which one is the, the, more, the one that I'm most interested in. And, and, and while I'm listening to a fantastic lecture, I often think oh, well, there is another fantastic lecture happening in another room, which I am missing just now. So it's, it's really is a difficult mm -hmm. decision in which room I want to listen to at any moment. You're, you're absolutely right. I'm hoping that with uh, the whole virtual element, we'll be able to listen to some mm -hmm. of those talks recorded. I think last year was up to a month. So that, ho hopefully that alleviates some of the some of the some of the issues and one of the advantages of virtual the disadvantage is we can't see each other because we haven't seen each other for so long <laughs> okay. um, but, but uh, we, we still maintain the the opportunity to do to get in touch with other an expert uh, to create the, the global networks as well right. yeah and which is which is what we're trying to do with uh, with uh, with the ngen uh, committee uh we have a later in this year for everybody just to be aware of the first ever ISWOG Africa collaboration. So there's a one day symposium, 40th of December, gynecological surgery and cancer, looking at what's Senegal. been done. Right? It's going to be in Senegal, isn't it? Yes, in it's in Senegal, exactly. Yeah, yeah. In combination oh. with, the, with the Julie Pasteur Institute in Dhaka in Senegal. Um, yeah. So that's fantastic, exciting, something yeah. novel. We have a, a Latin, um, Latin American uh, conference symposium being organized for, for next year that NGEN will be will play a part in. So please, uh, please keep looking at the website. And as I said, if you want to get involved in some way and uh, have any questions, individual questions, questions for your team, when you're a trainee, clinical, academic, please get in touch with any of us. Before we finish, I think Jesuit has something to say. Yes, something else uh, from Latin America as well. Uh, we are looking forward for the top five abstracts that were selected uh, to this to this year, and one of them are coming from Mexico. So, if there are people hearing us from Mexico, there is one big abstract coming from Raigan Martinez, and and I think it's great because it's talking about COVID, about mortality. So, I think that is very nice, and also an invitation for a hub, uh, as I mentioned again, issue is going global, and also the all the, the the meeting is going to be in English. And also there are specific, very small hubs. And one of them, uh, the title of that is how are we managing fetal growth restriction in Latin America? And that one, we are going to discuss that in Spanish. So I think if people is hearing us and say, you know, I don't want to there, going there because it's all going to be in English. That one in specific, very small one, but also it's going to get a reality from Latin America and fetal growth restriction that is a great topic. I love it. Thank you. Thank you for highlighting that. Uh, Daniel? And just since you mentioned the, the courses in Africa and Latin America, we've been having a lot of requests here from the Asia Pacific region. And just to highlight that we will be doing uh, an event here in, um, in the near future. And it's going to be um, for the whole of Asia Pacific on probably on fetal heart effects. Um, and, and there will be a huge involvement of the uh, next generation as well. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Paz, do you have anything to say before we finish? No, I no. Fantastic. We're really looking forward to seeing all of you.
Well, ex exactly. We are very excited um, about the World Congress. Looking forward to seeing all of you, as Leo has said. Get in touch with us, especially if you're a trainee. Any question, there's no such thing as a stupid question. We're here for you. I want to thank ISWOG for allowing us to have this Facebook Live event. Uh, and in particular, my fellow co-speakers here today, Jesuit Miranda from Colombia, Paz Romara from Chile, Leo Druka from Israel, and Daniel Rolnik, all the way from Australia. Thank you all. Um, we look forward to seeing you soon and best of luck. Ciao. Good to see you all. <laughs> good Ciao. to see you. Bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.